All right, dealing with a simple little video here, dealing with how to make tables. So if you have an equation or if you have a graph part of the trifecta, uh, tables are the sample of points that make, that fit in an equation. An equation relates the x and the y variables, and then a graph shows you what it looks like. So we're gonna take a look at making tables. Given an equation, how do we make a table? It's actually pretty easy. Uh, given a uh, graph, how do I make a, how do I make a table from there? All right, so, Tables from equations. Remember that whenever we deal with a linear equation, to make a table is pretty simple. So I'm going to break this into three categories. Um, category one, let's go with a color we can actually see. There we go. Category one, category two, category three. All right. First one is, what if you have any kind of equation that has an x and a y in it? So let's say I just had something really simple like x plus y is equal to seven. How do I make a table from that? Well, the first thing to understand is there are an infinite number of things, x's and y's, which are just, just a letter that represents some unknown quantity. There's an infinite number of different pairs of quantities that I can plug in in order to make seven. So what I can do with a table whenever I have two equations is I can just pick one. Once I know what one of them is, it automatically tells me what the other one is. That's the way it always works. And sometimes in science, we call this degrees of freedom. In statistics, we call it degrees of freedom. I can pick one, but as soon as I pick one of them, the other one is set. But I can pick whatever I want because I know in the back of my head there are an infinite number of pairs that can go together in order to make this thing seven. So when I go to start making my table, I can pick some x's or I can pick y's. It doesn't really matter uh, which one you want to end up picking. Just pick one or the other. It doesn't really matter uh, which you go. So let's just pick a few. Let's just say I've got 5, uh, 22. Let's put a negative 3 over here. 9 here and a 0 there. So I pick some different things. As soon as I plug in one of the variables, finding the other one is a piece of cake. Obviously, if x is 5, then y has to be 2 in order to obtain 7. If x is 22, well, how do we deal with that? So that's going to be 22 plus y is equal to 7. Some of you may realize what's going on here, but I can also just solve this thing. This is just a one-step equation. Subtract 22 from both sides. Y turns to be 7 minus 22, which is negative 15. So 22 pairs with negative 15. If y is negative 3, that's x plus negative 3 is equal to 7. Add 3 to both sides. This must be 10. 10 plus negative 3 produces 7. If this is 9, 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. If this is 0, then this one turns out to be 7. Making a table from an equation is a piece of cake. I picked some. The others are dictated by, once I've made my choice, what the other one has to be. So these are now ordered pairs. All these numbers together go together and would be able to form a graph or be able to be plotted on something or whatever the case is. Or if I just need a sample of points, here are five of, five pairs of points that make this equation true. That's what these are. This equation says some quantity x plus some quantity y is equal to 7. So what we're looking for is what are some different pairs of numbers that make this case. This is a table, it's just a sample. The reason I call it a sample is there's an infinite number of points that could go in there. For example, 5.1 plus 1.9, 5.2 plus 1.8, and so on and so forth. I can uh, adjust these in a minor way in order to be able to make the table. So the table from an equation Turns out maybe some not all the equations are, are, are that easy. I'll give you an example of a couple harder ones here in just a second, but it's still not really that big of a deal. But I want to deal with two other categories before we go into that. A lot of students in Algebra 1 are confused whenever an equation only has one variable in it. When an equation has two variables, it ends up slanting as far as the graph is concerned. It's going to be going uh, straight in a different direction. This does something else. There is no y. Oh, and start freaking out. Oh, there's no y. There's no y. It, it doesn't matter. X is 7 is what this equation is saying. What it's saying to you without actually showing it is that Y doesn't matter. So when I go to make my chart, when X is 7, that means X is 7, X is 7, X is 7, X is 7, and so on and so forth. If X is 7, it doesn't matter what Y is. I can pick whatever numbers I want to go in with that as long as X is 7. So I can put pi in here, I can put negative 33.714 in there if I want to. I can put something normal like 0 or 1. That's a chart. This is a sample of all the points that have x's that are 7. This equation simply means x is 7. Guess what? x is 7. Here are four points that have the x-coordinate to turn out to be 7. Likewise, if I said y is negative 5, this chart is just as easy, or this table is just as easy as the last one. This just tells me y is negative 5. It doesn't matter what x is. So, my y's are all negative 5, negative 5, 
negative 5, negative 5. And I can just go on forever doing that. And I can put whatever I want in to go with those things as long as the y is negative 5. 3, 4, 7, negative 11. I can put whatever I want in there in that case in order to make the table. So the important thing here to understand is this. If you have two variables that have to vary with each other, that means as x changes, y has to change in order to maintain that equals to 7 in this particular case. If you have these two types of equations where this one's missing the y and this one's missing the x, it just dictates to you what one of the two coordinates of the point has to be, and you can pick uh, whatever it is you want from the other one. All right. Let's deal with the other issue first, tables from graphs. This, again, is not a big deal. Actually, it's pretty simple. And then we'll come back and look at... Uh, just a couple more examples that are, that are um, um, a little bit harder to deal with, perhaps. All right, so we're going to make ourselves a little graph here, and there goes that line across there, and we're back to writing. So I've got, actually, let's keep stick with that. So I've got a, a line here. Um, let's take our line, start there, run through, down to... Here. Okay, so let's say that's my line. Uh, pretend it's a line. I know it's the same. It doesn't have arrows on the end. Let's pretend that's a line. If I want to make a table from this thing, how do I do that? Um, just find the points that it goes through. Now, some points are easier to find than others. For example, a fine point in here where it's like 1.25 and y is somewhere close to like, looks like 1.8 maybe. Yeah. That's not so easy to go, go around with, and, and, and the graph could be deceptive in some cases if it's not surely going through certain places. Equations are a little bit easier to deal with because they have an, a, a certainty about them, whereas this, it could be off by just a little bit, that kind of thing. But at the same time, is there a way to create a table from the graph? Yeah, look and see where it goes through. Looks like it goes through this point. Looks like it goes through that one. Looks like it goes through that one. Looks like it goes through there. Looks like it goes through there. And I can just keep going on forever, actually, in both directions. It'll come up with a whole bunch of points. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. This is negative five, four. This is negative three, three. This is negative one, two. This is one, one. This is three, zero. And so if I want to make this into a table, I just take the x's and the y's and take the points. Negative five, four. Negative three, three. Negative one, two. One, one. Three, zero. The next one going from there would have to turn out to be five, negative one, following the patterns on each side. So it's not an exact science, yet at the same time we can use our brain a little bit in order to try to figure out uh, the points that are going, going along that particular line. All right. So one more thing here. Uh, what if I have a little bit more complicated equation? Let's say I have an equation that says 3x plus 2y is equal to 12. Right? How do I make a table out of that? Well, the first thing is, it's the same thing I would have done before. I could pick whatever x's and y's that I want um, in order to create the situation I want. There's another trick you can do here, and that is to isolate one of the variables. You should have studied at some point how to uh, solve literal equations. What that means is to solve for one of the variables. So I have two methods for going about doing this. The first method is just to pick what I want. I like x is 0 and y is 0. y is zeros. Zeros always make things easier because as soon as I plug in x is 0, this part goes away and left 2y equals 12. So y has to be 6. So there's a point without having had to have done a whole, whole lot of work. If I plug in y is 0, I get 3x is equal to 12, so that's equal to 4. So there's two points that are just involving the 0. Can I choose other points? Sure, I could choose x is 2. If x is 2, this makes 6 plus 2y is equal to 12. So 2y is equal to 6, so y must be 3. So 2 and 3 would be another point. Maybe I can pick x is 4. I actually have, already have 4 in there. Let's say I'm going to pick x is 6. So that's going to be 18 plus 2y is equal to 12, so 2y is equal to negative 6, so y must be negative 3. So that's just the same case I did before. What are the things that are going in there, the things that need to be plugged in in order to create what I want? I get to pick one, then the equation tells me the other. Now, I know how to pick numbers in order to create easy things. What if we plug this in and you get a fraction? So what? It doesn't matter. They're just going to go through different fractions. All the x's and y's that are possible could be plugged in there, and there's a y that goes with it. Every x and every y has a certain x or y that ends up going with it and ends up getting paired. Another way to go about doing this type of problem, using the same example, is to solve for one of the variables. Typically, we end up solving for y and then plug in the x's. 
So if I solve this for y, I get 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. So y is equal to negative 3 halves x, and that was a 12, plus 6 when you divide everything by 2. So I solve the literal equation to end up in this situation. All right. So now making a table in a lot of ways is even easier, x's and y's, because now I can just plug in a bunch of x's, manipulate the x, and then that x then tells me particularly what the y is. So I can plug in x is 0. When I plug in x is 0, this goes away, y is 6. I can plug in x is 2, y 2, because this has a fraction of 3 halves. That half and that 2 can kind of knock each other off and make uh, the equation a little bit easier for me. So that becomes negative 3 plus 6, which is 3. So I can plug in 4. Half of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So I'm going through that really quickly, but that's something that you can do. What if I plugged in, say, uh, 1? That's no problem. That becomes negative 3 halves, which is 1.5 plus 6. And negative 1.5 plus 6 is 4.5. It doesn't change anything. And the method I would go about doing things, you still have an x, you still have a y. This equation and this equation have the same solutions because the same x's and the same y's make them both true, it's two ju just two different forms, which is why you would have learned how to solve literal equations before now. Right? So that's that. That's how you make tables. Making them off the graph is usually uh, a piece of cake. Making them off the equation just to use a little intelligence about what it is that you need to do in order to create your tables. Until next time, see ya!